everybody and welcome back to another YouTube video where I have brought a thing off eBay and think it's interesting enough to put it in front of the camera. You'll notice that we're on the floor again, meaning that even though um, I recorded the Playcraft episode on New Year's Eve, it is now the 13th of January and I still haven't cleared the table off enough for me to use it. So we're on the floor again, but it's quite a big box, so I don't mind being on the floor today. Because today we're looking at another train set, and I feel that uh, train sets may be a thing we end up being on the floor for anyway, for good measure. Now, this one isn't so much of a blind job, a lot of random things I brought. Um, this is actually a train set, uh, almost complete. It's missing a few bits and pieces. There are some random bits of tracks and so forth in here that we're looking at although it's the Dublo style, so not particularly useful to me in any way, shape or form, although one of the pieces looked quite interesting. But without further ado, let's go ahead and see what we've got in the box. Now, all I've done is uh, I opened this bit to make sure it was what I thought it was, otherwise this is an awful lot of setup for a completely wrong video. Uh, we've swapped around the cameras we're using this time. I've got my phone camera here and I've got the, uh, the JCV for a zoom up there which is what that lovely piece of white paper is that's the focusing point for it so we've got that so i'm going to see how that comes out probably awfully but uh it doesn't matter there's a lot of stuff in here oh okay oh whoa okay i i, I was not expecting that this is a roof lot 24 oh wow lot 24 the 11th of 12 december 2020 it's full of spider webs. Um, okay, that was not what I was expecting. There's another piece of the roof here. Who is it? This is, um... Oh, I can't see the lighting. Baco. Small red roof made in England. That one's broken, but okay. That's definitely not what I was expecting. Uh, I was unaware there were any buildings in here. Oh, wow. It only listed it up as spare track. It didn't list up anything else. Spare track and the engine. Oh, wow. That, oh, whoa. Okay, there is a lot more track in here than I originally thought. Well, let's put all this to one side for the second in time. Tiny bricks. There's tiny bricks. Let's put those there. And let's get on to what we're actually here for. Oh, gosh. Right after I pull these bits of the building out, that does not look like the right scale. Oh, well. Ugh. Whoa, ho, 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 okay. Let me put that there for a second. Uh, I'll make sure I haven't missed anything out in the box. There are uh, tiny bits of everything in the box. Oh, wow. Okay, I, I need to actually stop and go through that box because there are lots of little bits at the bottom of it. Um, this is the same seller I brought some other trains off. I've been buying trains off them over a period of time. There's more on eBay than I'm currently bidding on, which uh, if you follow my Twitter, you'll probably see before we uh, go. But uh, I'm just going to put that there because that's the thing that I found in the bottom. A teeny tiny missile. But we're not looking at teeny tiny missiles today because today we're looking at the Hornby Railways Scale Mono R508 Flying Scotsman set with exhaust steam sound. Ooh, exciting. Containing electric locomotive, two coaches in the LNER livery and oval of track. An oval of track. Yeah, it's it's a Hornby Railways Triang style um, flying Scotsman, 1973, 74-ish. Uh, I've, I've owned a flying Scotsman before, but it didn't run very well. And this was before I learned how to service anything, so I did get rid of it in the end. Made in Great Britain. Made in Great Britain by Rovex. So Rovex were still making it here. It's, it's all fairly standard information on the side. Oh gosh, a tiny piece of notepaper with nothing written on it. What a disappointment. That's, oh dear. But yeah, uh, I still haven't... Oh, got some more stuff on the bottom. Hornby Railways R6923. Mm. Well, we've got this, but we're putting that aside for one second because I want to look at the track quickly. Uh, all this extra track that's come with it, which is a lot more than I thought. And it's, yeah, it's all Dublo. Um, Duplo track isn't worth much because it's all steel and not many people run the three rail system, but it's three rail. So your power comes through here and it's discharged through there. So we've got some straight track there. Got a load of points. Oh boy. Uh, they don't look like manual points either. That's not, that's an electrical point. So you'd have to run a charge through that. They're manual. That's rust. That's 
Oh boy, if I uh, slip that in there, uh, you can just see right here, that's quite a lot of rust. A lot of this track is probably going to end up in the bin or in the box with the rest of my Duplo track that isn't used, but there's an awful lot of it, an awful lot more. Um, they actually listed that I had a load of spare track, they didn't know what to do with it, so they're just gonna put it in with this auction. Um, so yeah, that, that's it. And if, you know, if I put it again here, you can sort of see how very rusty and not good it is, um, which obviously isn't ideal in any situation. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of it though. That's a power rail. That's actually a good one. I've been tempted to try and get into the Duplo scene of things, but it's expensive and awkward and doesn't like running very often. But uh, I'm going to put all this track with my other Duplo track because I do have quite a lot of it for reasons I won't go into right now. And we'll, you know, maybe one day I'll run some Duplo stuff. I've seen it running. It's catastrophically terrifying. Um, obviously, we've got these buildings here. They don't... Uh, they're nice, but they don't have um, the whole construction by the look of it. That, that one building, maybe. One building might have the whole construction, but we're not here for that. As I said, we're here for the Flying Scotsman. And obviously, I haven't opened this yet, so... Uh... Is there anything on the back? No, the back is just blank. So we're going to lay it out as thus. And... Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Okay. That looks lovely. It really does. That's a bit dirty. I'm just going to pull this because this is the Dublo bit of truck I was interested in. It's a siding. It's a teeny tiny little building with things on it. Oh, that's adorable, but completely useless. It's also electrified, so I'm terrified as to what it would have been. But that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at this, and that is lovely. Uh, I can see there's a little bit of wearing on the loco as it stands, but nothing to be unexpected. I paid £51 for this set, which is about the right price. They go for a bit cheaper if they're in a bit naffer condition, but uh, this one actually looks pretty good. So um, let's move this to the side a little bit so the box is out of focus there. And let's get the loco out. Ooh, that is incredibly clean. That does not look like it's been run much at all. Front bogies are a bit dirty, but that's in generally very good nick. Uh, the 4772 on this side is warm. Let's put it onto the... Uh... Oh, piss, I've moved the whole thing. If we uh, bring it here, you can see we've got a the Flying Scotsman, it's really nice. I move it back a little bit, you can see the 4772 is somewhat worn, but the gearing all appears to be quite good. And if we uh, sip it out here, you can see that the wheels look very clean, which is um, not what you'd expect from such an old set, but it is. If we bring it back around this side as well, we can see that this side's condition is much better, indicating this is probably the side, and this was the side that was in the box but it's probably not been taken out of the box for an awfully long time. So that's lovely. Now let's have a look at, oh, the tender. Plastic wheels, are the, oh, I say plastic wheels, there's something up with that. Oh, that'll be for the chugging sound, I assume. Now this is a Triang Hornby, so it's of the right sort of time period. If I again bring it into the close-up to see if uh, this is any good. LNER, as he said, looks quite nice. If we pull it up here, you can see, oh, you might not be able to see. I can't see the screen very well. I'm kind of running on the screen there. There's a little piece of metal and it looks like this is a metal, potentially metal axle. If I had to guess, something runs over there that makes the chugging sound. Now there is quite a lot of hair on this, um, on the axles. So it has been run, but when the last time it was run, I don't know. Um, how well it's gonna run, I don't know. We'll, we'll do the test. Unfortunately, oh, its hook is bent. Oh, that's, oh, hmm. Now, I do have replacements of these, but I'm gonna be a little bit risky, and I'm going to uh, be a bit naughty, and I'm just gonna try and, uh, I hate it when these hooks bend. Bend it back into shape. Okay, so I've, I've managed to um, bend it back into shape. I shouldn't have, but I have, so that's good. We'll put that there for the moment. We'll keep that on the, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put it here. And now we've got we've got an oval of track, but we're not interested in the track. Everybody's seen track. Um, 
but with exhaust steam sound. Mmm, Hornby Railways. Right, let's have a look at one of the carriages here. They're very tightly packed, and I suppose it's what you want. Built in Britain. Well, its axles look a little bit rusty, but nothing catastrophic. Pidge is very excited, if you can't tell. That's very nice, though. If I, uh, once again, you're going to have to kind of half and half this, if you will. Starting on this side, ah, number 1010. You can see the axles there are a little bit rusty, but nothing absolutely god awful. If we uh, once again move it over to this side, we can see that these axles are much better. Once again, there's, oh, I'm dropping it. Whoops. It's quite a lot of hair around here, but it's nothing terribly catastrophic. L N E R. It's uh, got this Falks wood setup. I mean, obviously it's plastic, but it's got that sort of look. It's quite a nice carriage. Um, it doesn't look like there's any internal detail, unfortunately, so I won't be able to paint any little figures and put them inside, which is a shame, but that's just the way some things go. It's also gone, you know, it's a little coloured from age, but nothing too catastrophic. And uh, let's pull out the next carriage as well. Oh, I say. This one looks different. It has less windows by the looks of it, so it's probably the rear brake van. Once again, it's uh, built in Britain by Triang. Now, that's interesting. No, it's not. I'm just blind. So let's put this into the uh, the close-up cam again. So we'll start with this end. And, you know, it's... Um, oh, where are we? There we are. Local 1870, this carriage is. And it's got a lot of, of uh, little moulded details, though nothing uh, fantastic. It's in very nice condition, though. Once again, the roof is a teeny bit yellowed. Um, LNER again, same kind of fog setup. I mean, it's the same carriage, it's just slightly different. Uh, I don't know if that will come up on the camera, but it does say built in Britain and Triang there. Uh, plastic wheels by the looks of it. No metal wheels on this, but that's fine. They've got that white lining. And the uh, the hooks all seem fine on that. So, well, there we go then. That is um, a Flying Scotsman train set in effect. Uh, you know, it's fresh out of the box. So I'm not going to bother with the track. It's solid taped in, so I'm just going to leave that because it will probably break the casting if we take it out. Uh, I do wonder if there's anything under the casting because occasionally people write things or put things in. I doubt it, but uh, yeah, there's nothing under there. A teeny piece of plastic, which is probably a broken sleeper. Absolutely nothing to worry about. But yes, uh, unfortunately, we don't have the power supply, which would have been down here somewhere. But um, that's not the most pressing matter because thankfully they all run on the same sort of power supply. But uh, I think without further ado, what we'll do now is we'll take uh, the loco, just the loco, to the track and we'll see if it will run at all. And then we'll bring it to the table for a service and then we'll take it back to the track like we did with the Playcraft one. Hopefully, unlike the Playcraft one, this one will actually work. So please join me at the railway. So here we are at the lines. I apologise for the slightly less quality um, lighting here. I'm not moving the entire lighting rig just yet. You may notice in the background there is another loco. Um, I think that's on this power supply. Nope. That would be on this power supply. This is another one that arrived today, uh, which has already been serviced. I did that on Twitch for the hell of it. Um, really like this loco. It's surprisingly powerful, and yeah, it's pulling a load of Playcraft and Joe F wagons, and of course, Playcraft was made by Joe F, so yeah, he's doing a lot of weight, but uh, yeah, he's not what we're looking at today, although he's a really nice loco. I think he's a bit older than this one, so I'm going to leave him there. Instead, we've got two railway lines now, not one. I'm going to slip our Scotsman on there and just make sure that's all turned off. This guy looks immaculate. He really, really does. Minus that little bit of numbering. Immaculate doesn't mean he's going to run, however. I can hear he's attempting it. No, he's not running, is he? Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, there we go. He didn't want to. That might just be many many years of being stuck in a box not moving but he's going and he's going quite well he didn't want to move that one it, ha it has that very typical triang burny smell although look at that crawl straight out of the box this has probably been used but it's not been serviced for many years and that's how he's willing to move oh my gosh what a loco 
And there we go. He's uh, he's stored now. If I, it's, uh, I'm just going to put him down for a lap just before we go. See if we do an entire lap. Certainly looks like it will. There we go. You can see him in the back. He's passing the diesel. Oh, I could literally just put this out on the railway and not service it and say that was done. But I'm not going to do that because even I, as an idiot, know you have to service these things. So let's take him up to the table and do a service of this lovely, lovely loco. This loco is the cleanest loco I have ever seen second hand. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, so the it, the mechanism is a tiny piece of like light, light plastic foil with a piece of curve and all on it. Okay, and here we are back at the railway mm, with the newly serviced, even though it really didn't need it, Flying Scotsman sitting right there. And I'm going to put it on the tracks and we're going to basically run it around for a bit. Um, now, obviously, when I first put it on the tracks earlier, she didn't want to go at first until it was got going. I assume she was just a little bit stuck, uh, as you will have seen from um, the servicing bits that I put up. This is the cleanest loco I think I've ever owned. It is ridiculously clean. So it doesn't really need a service, but if you can give him one anyway, if it's the right temp, it is. Well, yeah. I've got another little uh, engine on the railway. Oh, look at that. That is fantastic. It's even got a great slow speed, even if it sounds like it wants to die. It does have a half decent top speed. Not massive, but it's there. I don't really know what you want me to say. You know, the, the loco works, which is fantastic. Let's uh, do a lap backwards. He's pretty fast backwards as well. Yes, the track has developed a fair bit since the last time I did a video on it. Right, well, uh, I'm going to get him going because you might as well have a couple of engines running since we have the space and now I'm going to start putting everything on so we want this one hither uh, 
the reason we're running that little one there is that's one of my childhood trains. Um, I got that in the early 2000s, I think. It's not the worst for your own. Thankfully, that hooks up, so I don't have to replace the coupling. But yeah, I got it in the early 2000s. Uh, it's one of the two childhood trains that I possess. And I made the logs not too long ago, and I really like them. So that's going to be running counter to our fine Scotsman today. They connect up really nice and easy, so uh, ain't nothing else to do really, is there? Let's go. <laughs> oh, I said it connected up properly, but it obviously didn't. Hmm. I said that connector was bent. One of the few flaws of the engine was that it was bent. Um, hopefully, that's not going to be a problem. The fact that I can't put a blooming thing back on the rails is probably going to be problematic, though. It seems to be sticking now. Right. Well, something's squeaking quite horrific. I don't know if that's the tender or if that's one of the uh, carriages. Sounds like it's one of the uh, the tender, not one of the carriages. Uh, I can't hear that realistic chugging sound, although I wasn't expecting to hear it. That mechanism is weird, to say the least. But uh, yeah, I got a flying Scotsman. Oh, yeah. It is a the Flying Scotsman from that set that we looked at, and it's a really good runner. It's incredibly clean. I don't think it's barely being used. I am really, really pleased with it. I also learned that there's a photograph of the Flying Scotsman right near where I live from 1984, I think it is, so quite a long-lived engine. I can run it with diesels and it won't look particularly out of place, so yeah, really, really pleased with the set that I got there. For the price as well really good um i'm looking forward to running this loco with some other things some uh different cargo trains because obviously i'm running the little guy right now but uh we can go with different cargo trains but yes thanks for watching if you did enjoy this content don't forget to like comment subscribe it helps me out it helps me develop my youtube channel and figure out if these train videos much like my camcorder videos if they are at all viable to carry on doing and i'm going to keep playing with model trains because it's what i do so yeah i'll see you around Go, Scotsman, go. You have people to deliver. Oh.
I remember what happened last time I put maximum power on. <laughs> 